Hello, everybody. Hope everyone's uh, having a great day here. Welcome to Collaborative Robotics Training Days. My name is Steve Crow. I'm the executive editor at Robotics at WTWH Media. I'll be your moderator today. Uh, today's presentation, uh, as you see here, is about palletizing and depalletizing using collaborative robotics. So again, today we'll be focusing on the benefits of using cobots for those applications. We'll highlight some recent trends here, and we'll also discuss some real world case studies. I do have to thank our sponsors for this individual session here, Doosan Robotics America, as well as Chief Tech Precision Company. Uh, this event and many others would not be possible without uh, their support and our other sponsor support. So thank you, gentlemen, uh, and, and those companies very much. So without further ado, we will get to our presentation today. As you can see on your screen here, we have three different presenters that'll be exploring uh, cobots and depalletizing and palletizing applications. And up first is Matt Langdon, he's engineering manager at Doosan Robotics Americas. Matt, uh, thanks so much for doing this, man. Really appreciate your time, your expertise. Uh, the floor is now yours. Excellent, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, like you said, my name is Matt Langdon, engineering manager at Doosan Robotics Americas. Um, and I'd like to talk just a quick little bit about who we are and what we do here in the in the Americas. Um, <clears throat> so um, let me take a step back and introduce Doosan Group. So Doosan Group is um, a South Korean based um, conglomerate for lack of a better word. Um, they have multiple business lines within the group. Um, the most notable one most people would be familiar with is um, Bobcat um, Skid Steer. So they produce the, you know, the, the, the back loaders and the, the construction equipment that a lot of people I think are familiar with. Um, and at some point they wanted to start a new venture line and they realized the robotic industry is going to be massive in the next few years. So back in 2014, they launched Doosan Robotics. Um, at the time, this was completely compromised, comprised of um, R&D engineers. Um, and it took them roughly two years to create and develop this product as we know it. Um, and they launched in Korea in 2016. Um, and then in 2019, they launched here in uh, North America. Um, and actually, just this year, 2023, we've created a an office here um, in Plano, Texas, um, U.S. So it's a really exciting time for us. Um, the core the core vision for Doosan Robotics is is that we're all engineers at at by design and at heart. You know, we've almost half of our company um, headcount are engineers in our R and D group to really. Um, we strive to create the product um, and make it better and really adapt to what the market is is needing um, from a collaborative arm. Um, we manufacture our, our, our arms in um, south of Seoul, South Korea in Suwon. Um, our lab is also located there where we do all of our R&D research. Um, and so real quick, um, I'd like to talk about kind of what is a collaborative robot because there are multiple manufacturers and really the, the through line that most of us um, will preach to you day and night is safety, ease of use and flexibility. Um, you know, the collaborative robot is absolutely supposed to be a safe robot. It's not supposed to be used in a, um, or it's supposed to be used in an environment, you know, next to people. Um, and so we want to make sure our robot is highly sensitive and, you know, basically won't hurt anybody. Um, so the easy ease of use is again, um, you know, we have a, a nice UI, um, to interact with the robot and there's multiple features that allow you to, um, basically interact with the, the robot arm and, and create programs and, you know, start and stop your programs. Um, it's also extremely easy to integrate with. Um, uh, this this uh, process we have of integration is is highly documented, and I'll, I think the guys coming up will um, 
speak to that as well. Um, also, the flexibility of the robot, you know, it's not a drilled to the ground. It can be moved um, and, and programmed easily. Um, again, the our, we have a high, uh, a large line of products um, based on um, customer needs and wants and the application they're being installed. Everything from a small five kilogram arm to up all the way up to the H2515, which is a payload capacity of 25 kilograms. Um, there's also multiple uh, longer reaches um, in, in, in between uh, 1,700 millimeters all the way down to um, 600 millimeters. So, um, yeah, that is uh, basically my quick speech on Doosan Robotics Americas. I'm happy to be here. And at this point, I think I'm going to hand things over to the team at B Robux. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. My name is David. I'm uh, I'm uh, the CEO at B Robux, uh, and uh, I have. Uh... Hello, I'm uh, Philip. I'm a uh, sales director at uh, Rodelec. We're a distributor of Doosan uh, Solutions in uh, Canada. Yeah, so as you can see in the background, we're uh, actually sitting in our uh, demo center uh, in Sherbrooke, Canada. Uh, um, uh, Sherbrooke is a city close to Montreal, uh, as, a, as a reference for uh, most of, uh, of the people. Um, yeah, so thanks for having us today. Thanks for being there. Uh, very, very happy to, uh, to be here. Um, we're uh, at, at Birabox, we've, we've developed a, a palletizing solution. Uh, um, yeah, so, so I guess well, today we're going to talk about about uh, our solution, uh, but solutions in general, right? For uh, palletizing and depalletizing using uh, co cobots. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you want to take uh, care? Yeah. What is uh, B Robux, David? Uh, where do you come from? <laughs> yeah. So it's a combination of uh, an engineering firm, uh, um, uh, which was launched uh, seven years ago, uh, and a company, a, manuf a robot based manufacturer. Uh, that was based. Uh, that was uh, founded uh, six years ago. Uh, we merged those two companies together two years and a half ago to create B Robots, uh, and we're really focused um, on all that is palletizing, depalletizing, and all that surrounds it. Uh, we're going to show a couple of examples today uh, of our solutions um, uh, that 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 are answers to uh, what we believe uh, uh, the the market needs are actually yeah exactly so you know going to a partnership with uh with b robux we thought of you know trying to see where we should put our development efforts in and we found some uh very credible uh resources where um you know some some references where we found that palletizing would be probably the most let's say the highest uh return on investment uh, application we can find and so we estimated about, I think, $2.4 billion being invested in palletizing, automation palletizing, not just robotics, but in, in, in general. And 65% of that uh, investment will be in North America. And this is a, something that's going to have a growth of 5% approximately for, per year. So it's, it's something that was uh, really a no-brainer for us to see that is, there's going to be some expansion, there's going to be some uh, need in palletizing, depalletizing in the market. Yeah. And, and those numbers seem to be very uh, very uh, high, right? But it, it, they, it, this includes all that is automated palletizing, right? Exactly. So the gantry systems, uh, uh, standard robot systems as well, and of course, uh, all that is related to, to uh, collaborative robots. Yeah. So. Yeah. Talking about collaborative robot, what does, uh, let's say, a, a customer want uh, in that regard? And what we're being told in, let's say we want to have a collaborative robot application, uh, it has to be no calibration, no programming, and no technical skills. We're, we're, we're talking about applications in companies where operators don't have necessarily the technical skills to program a robot. It has to be very easy to, to use, and we don't want to program it every time you have to change a pattern, every time you have to change anything. The other most important part is the safety. Safety is is number one, really, because you want to make sure your operators are incompetent and are working in a safe environment. The next thing is short lead times. When you're talking about collaborative robot, 
the 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 lower the the, uh, the labor shortage at the moment is something that is at the moment now not something you want to invest and have something delivered in a year or two this is something uh, we're looking at uh, at the moment but the ease of use is is really what we're uh, we were targeting so here you see this is industrial and collaborative it's not industrial versus it's it's two different things you have some industrial applications that you need an industrial robot and you have those collaborative applications where we're going to talk more about where you see there's a big difference and there's a quite a big line where you see that this is an industrial this is a collaborative but you see also the advantages of using a collaborative robot in uh, manufacturing environments so Doosan, when they came out with the h uh, at least we're talking here about the h 2017 that's a 20 kilogram 1.7 meter uh, range robot it, it opened up uh, the you know the, the the let's say the development in trying to find a solution that could fit most applications uh, the reach at 1.7 uh, meters range is perfect for working on a standard uh, us pallet and a 25 20 kilogram payload is something that is being used by human beings and operators taking boxes it's the average range of what you're trying to to get some automation in at the moment so you know prag programmability is is key for for this you need something that is uh very easy to use there is uh, programming of the robot but there's as well there's the you know the modern uh, languages and collaborative ro in in robotics and software that need to be mixed match and that's what uh, robox did they merged the uh, modern languages with the robotic skills of their people and came up with a solution that is really fantastic we'll we'll present you uh, in the following slides Thank you. And, and Matt, you were talking earlier about, uh, you know, the ease of programming uh, uh, thanks to cobots. Uh, and we've tried to, to you know, follow this mentality uh, uh, when creating or when uh, uh, when uh, programming our, our stack at software. Uh, so, 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 yeah, we're going to explain it uh, later on anyways. Uh, so PALS is a solution to uh, what we believe the market needs are, as I was mentioning. Uh, we've tried to uh, work hard uh, in developing the, the simplest, most easy to use palletizing solution uh, on the market. Um, uh, there's no need for uh, robotic skills when you use a pallet unit. Um, so that's probably key. Uh, we do lots of uh, voice of customers. We do uh, probably uh, one to, yeah, probably around one uh, tour, uh, demo, uh, demo tour uh, per month. Uh, so we visited uh, many customers where we uh, we, we simply uh, uh, bring uh, our demo units uh, on their shop floor. We roll it in place and palletize their actual products. Uh, for us, that's been it's been a been uh, it's been a good uh, way to learn more, you know, about uh, reality, uh, about you know what are the the needs and and, and expectations of end users. Um, yeah. So, so what we've learned down 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 the road is that portability is a, is key. Uh, so you want to be able to move your unit from one line to the other um, uh, within minutes. Uh, so, so when using a, a, a cobot like the H2017 from Doosan, uh, it's lightweight, right? It, it weighs like 74 kilos, uh, a little more than uh, 120 pounds. something pounds. Yeah. yeah. So you can. We, you know, we, we've installed it uh, on a mobile base, uh, uh, so portability is key. Uh, our, 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 our conveyor is attached to it, so there's no need to um, to program the pick points uh, to pick pick up a box, uh, nor you know the pallet uh, uh, location as well. So, so, so portability, modularity as well. Uh, we've developed a, a modular uh, unit. Uh, the, the 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 the, the the simplest unit is the one that's completely collaborative, palletizing 6.5 uh, uh, cycles a minute. Well, yeah, 6.5 cycles a minute. Uh, when we add safety, we can reach up to 10.5 cycles a minute. And there's uh, a third unit uh, uh, where we can use uh, 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 vertical, vertical axis. axis to palletize up to 105 inches high. Uh, robustness is also key. Uh, you don't want to uh, have to, you know, reteach points because uh, 
uh, your base is too uh, flimsy, as an example. Uh, so, uh, and, and you're in a, in a manufacture environment. You know? so, so there's truck lifts uh, moving around the robot. Uh, there's, uh, there's many possibilities of, you know, uh, having, you know, some, some collisions and well, vibration is also vibration. Yeah. yeah. So, so robustness is key for end users uh, um, and the footprint. Uh, as uh, most of you uh, uh, may be aware of, the footprint is a manufacturer uh, is really, really key, right? It's really important. Um, so uh, as an answer to this need, we've developed uh, um, a secured zone using uh, five, ver uh, five vertical zone scanners uh, to create kind of a, a, a safety fence or parameter around the work cell. Uh, to limit, you know, the the, the foot the footprint of it, even if it's secured, even if you need to go at higher rates uh, or at higher height, uh, uh, you want the the smallest uh, secured zone uh, uh, possible. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah, yeah, that's small. Yeah, um, uh, and the software again uh, in in our case for our solution the 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 teach pend and the robot controller, everything is hidden in the base. So, so the only interface that the human being has with uh, the robot or with the application, with the unit, is uh, the HMI, the touch screen HMI, uh, and the button set uh, that's located at the front of the work cell. Um, and we've embedded uh, the calculations most, well, the calculations you found in, in, in standard palletizing uh, uh, or pattern generators, uh, uh, pattern generating softwares on the market. Uh, so the calculations are embedded in our software. So uh, when so so uh, from a, a user's point a user point of view, all you have to do is input uh, the three dimensions of a case of a box, uh, the weight of it, uh, and then you hit the uh, automatic pattern pattern generator button to generate padded patterns. And most of the time, the recommended padded pattern uh, that's generated automatically uh, uh, within the software is the one that's being used you know, by the end user or the, the, the client, um, <clears throat> because it's the one that maximizes uh, the, the quality of cases on a pallet, and it's the one that uh, maximizes the stability uh, of the pallet as well, which is uh, very important. Um, so yeah, so, so it's it it has uh, 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 it's it's utopian, but it it has you know at the end of the day to be as simple as cooking a popcorn in a microwave. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's what the that's what the the end user is looking for. Uh, yeah, if you know from, how to program, uh, yeah. if you know how to program a microwave, you know how to program the system. Yeah, you, you know easy. using this popcorn popcorn yeah, yeah. Uh, button, yeah, and you let the magic happen. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, so we have a, a video here just to show you our solution, which is one of the solutions available in the market. So you connect it to uh, the end of your line, an actual conveyor. Lock it in place. Connect the compressed air, compre connect the uh, 110 volts uh, electricity to it. Input the dimensions of a case. You can select where you want to have your sticker on. Select the pallet. And you hit the pallet pattern generator button. Click on it. And magic. So literally within, you know, two, three, four minutes. Maximum. Maximum. You create your pallet pattern. You set it as active, and you're ready to palletize. We use a skewed conveyor, an angled conveyor, uh, so that we don't need to uh, to install, you know, pushers to locate uh, the cases at the datum position, at the pick position. Um, so, skewed conveyor uh, in our case is key, uh, since there's no adjustment. So you can basically move the system from a line to another line without any adjustment, just adapting, you know, the boxes you're using it. Yeah, and, and in, in this video, we've seen how to create a new padded pattern, but obviously if it's been generated before, you'd simply select it from the list and you're ready to, you know, exactly. to, to palletize. Right? Um, and I've seen there's a question about how quickly uh, 
can can I switch between production lines with the uh, with the system? Uh, if you're using the the UPS option, uh, you simply move it in place, connect the compressed air, and it's, you know it's it's it, it it takes the time it takes to bring the a cart to another place. Yeah, know. exactly. So so we're talking about minutes, and yeah, depends on how far you need to walk, basically. Um, so, you know, safety aspects and, and myths. You, see, you hear about a lot of myths in, in collaborative robots. Uh, speed is one of them. Everyone says it's uh, limited to, I think it was 250, 250 yeah. millimeters a second. You know, speed is not really a, a real reference. It's a, it's, it's, it's just kind of a basic point people are, are talking about, but it's usually what we want in a collaborative application is uh, to minimize the impact of force. So force impact is really what you're looking at here. And that's what we've, we've maximized in using the speed of the robot, uh, as well, palletizing height. So when you're in the law, it requires that when you have a possible impact to the head, the speed allowed in a collaborative mode is zero. So that's why we try to propose with safety scanners uh, zone limitations. So if there's any chance of collision to a head, uh, it, it has to be a zero chance, zero probability to, to happen. Uh, automatic rearm as well, you know, the, to return to a non-collaborative mode when you're going through uh, a, a zone, a uh, safety zone, it cannot be done automatically. Someone can go on a pallet. It's always, you know, the risk analysis. That every time you're doing a project, a palletizing system, collaborative, whatever application you're working on, a collaborative robot, every time it has to be a risk assessment. You know, the, the robot is collaborative, but you put a chainsaw on it, it, it is less collaborative. You know, it, it could be as a as simple as that, or it could be as also as, it could be just a sharp edge on the gripper. Everything needs to be analyzed, and that's why you need a, a risk assessment done on, uh, on one of those. Um, yeah, so ROI, uh, obviously it's really important, although you know labor shortages uh, 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 is a big problem right now in America, um, uh, but still companies are, are still looking at, at fast ROI. Um, uh, and, and for that, you know, some companies uh, uh, like us have developed additional features uh, to the, the basic unit, you know, to the basic palletizing or depalletizing unit. Uh, so the slip sheet manager is an example of it um, uh, to manage either flexible or uh, uh, rigid uh, cardboard uh, type of slip sheets. Uh, case erecting as well. Uh, so we see more and more uh, case erecting uh, standalone uh, systems on the market. Uh, so, of course, if you have to palletize a, a case at the end of the line, uh, well, there's uh, great chances that someone has to erect it, right? Yeah. <laughs> to... You need a box to put something in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we've developed a case erecting. Uh, uh, Annex uh, to the to the the basic unit. So the robot in this case will pick uh, an unfolded case on one side, erect it, tape the bottom of it, put it either on a table or uh, on a conveyor, and when it comes back to it, it'll palletize the same uh, case to uh, the pallet on the other side. Um, so so sometimes uh, to uh, to get uh, you know an acceptable return on investment, uh, well you can add you know. The standard features like that uh, on, on the on a standard uh, palletizing or depalletizing unit. Um, uh, uh, other features like dual palletizing. Uh, some customers uh, will have you know slower line. Uh, so uh, let's say you have a customer with with two slow lines uh, 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 where uh, you know producing product A or product B, yeah. then you can merge them to the same uh, pallet system. Exactly. So you would pro uh, palletize one product on one side and the other one on the other side. So so features like that can, you know, uh, get a company to a uh, faster uh, return on investment. Uh, so just ideas right like that. Um, uh, yeah, so depalletizing, there's uh, two ways right now that we, we see, uh, you know, in the, uh, when using cobots uh, to depalletize. Uh, if, the, if the stacks are pretty, you know, stable and, and you know that they're, they're, there's going to be an accurate position of the cases on a, on a pallet, uh, you can achieve it without vision. Um, if not, some companies will add vision systems to their uh, to their uh, units uh, to pick the cases at the right place. 
um, so you can you can depalletize. Uh, you can also repalletize uh, uh, using uh, the same kind of feature. Uh, so just speak from this system. And there's again, as David said, there's a bunch of different uh, vision systems available to. At least you just need to center the the box position for the robot to pick it up, and then it's uh, it, it you put it on a skew conveyor and it goes through uh, directly through. Uh, um, you know the the manufacturing process that needs to be done. Yeah, or you use like in this case, you use the the, the scute conveyor to uh, reposition uh, uh, the case. Yes. And it. Okay. Some customers want to have either a smaller stack, so coming in from the warehouse with it's on a bigger pallet, they want it on a smaller pallet for transport. That's something that could easily be done that we've seen in the past uh, re requirements from customers. Yeah, and or, or mixing products, yep. right? One uh, one customer has recently asked us to uh, to uh, adapt our system so that they could bring uh, on one side, you know, a, a palletized stack of a product and mix it with another product coming coming from the line. So so we repalletize uh, a mixed pallet uh, using a pre-palletized pallet and. Uh, boxes coming from uh, uh, a lining production. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, so lots of men, lots of different, you know, ideas and options that some companies and there's many more on the market. Obviously, we're just like uh, 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 covering it uh, uh, in surface. Right yeah, now. yeah. Um, yeah. So in brief, from from our experience, uh, 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 what we understand and from the market related to collaborative robotics and palletizing and depalletizing. Uh, the ease of use, very important. Uh, safety, always, 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 very important as well. Short lead times. Uh, thanks well, to Doosan. Thanks to Doosan, yeah, yeah with the, the one week lead time, even yeah, yeah. if it comes from Korea uh, to Canada. Um, and of course, fast ROI, either with the simple, you know, uh, uh, standard unit or with uh, the addition of uh, features to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's knocking at the door right now, Philip? <laughs> well, you know, uh, AMR solutions, we're, we're seeing uh, more and more requirements for uh, people using AMRs, just so when the pallet's done, you send an AMR, go picks it up. So this is a very uh, simple add-on that has been added to the pallet system, you'll see in the video, where you can just adapt the base of the robot, the base of the, uh, the pallet stand, and then the robot adapts itself to position it for uh, any AMR type solution you'll find in the market to come, grab the pallet, pick it up, and bring it wherever it needs to be. So those are add-on systems that you know can complete kind of a turnkey, all-in-one solution for your uh, palletizing and, and transporting needs. Um, what we will see more and more often as well is mixed palletizing. Uh, using uh, artif artificial uh, intelligence. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for you know, uh, uh, mix and match centers. Yeah, and exactly. Stuff like that. Yeah. So it's that's, yeah. it's not an easy thing to do. It needs some AI type solutions, some uh, uh, let's say work around. But that's something Waiting that waiting stations. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. So we're, we're there's a lot of people working on. We're working on it. So it's something you should see in the near future. Um, Where can we see the PAL system, uh, David? Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. Good. We're, we're going to be at the at the D, uh, in Detroit uh, at the end of uh, of, uh, of May at the Automate Show. Uh, we'll we will also be at the Pack Expo in Las Vegas in September. Uh, you can see us uh, during uh, our our demo tours. Uh, uh, just call us, and we can you know bring this unit to your manufacturer should you want to test it. Uh, we're going to be in Texas uh, uh, mid-June uh, during the week of the 12th. Uh, we're going to end our demo week uh, at Doosan uh, in Texas uh, as well. Uh, so just let us know, and, and you know, we receive many uh, dem uh, demands yeah. uh, for de demos, and, and, and we plan for it. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, and there's a demo center right here, so you have any boxes, you just send it, or just send dimensions, weight, and we'll do some 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 demos. And if anyone is in... The Montreal area could come here and visit our, our, our demo room and we'll showcase uh, the system for you guys. Yeah. So I think that's about it, isn't it? Uh, we're at... Uh, I'm good. Yeah? Yeah, nice job, gentlemen, staying on time.
plenty of time here. Perfect. Um, for questions. We were <laughs> looking at the clock. It looks uh, looks fine. Yeah, absolutely. So we are going to uh, pivot, folks, to the Q and A portion uh, of today's talk. So again. If there are any questions, there's a couple of questions that have come in. There's plenty of time. I uh, highly encourage you to take available of the, the experts that we have on the line here while they're here. So, uh, and again, for folks who are watching this on demand, don't forget that you can still ask questions on demand. We'll get them in our dashboard uh, on the back end and forward them to the appropriate folks uh, as well. A couple of questions that came in. I'm not sure who to direct these at, so I'll just read them out loud and then uh, somebody uh, on the other end can chime in. But somebody wanted to know what end of arm tooling options are available. Yeah, so so we design our own standard uh, end of arm tool, uh, which are uh, uh, adjustable. Um, uh, we can also use those uh, parallel types of grippers. Uh, we have an OnRobot 2 FGP20 right now here. Uh, you know, when using uh, tray types of boxes that couldn't be lifted using vacuum cups on the top. Uh, so in cases like that, you can use parallel gripper. So, so many different, you know, standard grippers that we manufacture or that we uh, can buy and include in the system. Uh, so, so yeah, most of the time when you can lift the, the, the cases from uh, their top, uh, the, best is, the best way to uh, manage it is to use uh, vacuum cups. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper. Uh, and it's very efficient. And just to maybe come back, it's it's uh, it's adaptable to whatever uh, end of arm tooling to lift appro uh, appropriately the box. So there's a team here that optimizes uh, the need and discusses with customers. Yes, and sometimes you know we didn't mention it uh, during the presentation, but you can use uh, you can you, you could take two cases, three cases at a time to maximize you know the palletizing uh, 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 cycle time. Cycle time. Uh, and so, so you could you could have a, a you know a zoned uh, end of arm tool uh, like one one zone, two zone, three zones, depending on the application. Uh, but most of the time, our standard uh, end of arm tool with with four vacuum cups that are adjustable in position, uh, uh, it, well, is the way to go. Yeah, yeah, it's the way to go. Yeah. There's there's been a few questions about pricing and rough cost. Uh, we're not going to answer those here online. We'll let those these guys follow up with you. Uh, again, everybody who's asked that question, we have your your information, and we'll we'll pass that along to folks. Um, but I think it's better to take those types of conversations offline, not do it here publicly. Uh, another question that has come in is about uh, camera. Is there a camera that comes with the Palts system? So, so standard, no. There's no camera. Uh, that would be a custom uh, application. Uh, we've did it in the past, but you know, with the standard pilots unit, uh, there is no camera. Uh, and 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 the reason is, um, there's, you know, it's it's difficult to add it as a standard option uh, uh, with the ease of programming and everything. So that would be a, a, an add-on to uh, the pilots uh, series basic unit. Yeah, I think it'll all depend on what is required to do with the vision. You know, if it's uh, uh, to, to location, and we'll try to find the optimal product for that. If it's also to include uh, OCV, OCR, uh, optical character reading, to, to identify boxes or whatnot, it, it'll be investigated with their customization team, as we can call yeah. them. They'll find the optimized. And if someone has a standard, we'll, they'll work around it. Because sometimes, you know, you could have this camera installed uh, permanently yeah. uh, in the zone. Some Sometimes you want it to be uh, on the robot. So it really depends on the application. Uh, it's very hard, uh, 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 or at least we didn't find a way to standardize it. Exactly. And there's also maybe there's some uh, validation uh, quality control of the box that could be done differently than whatever. So er everything is has been worked on for on, on different aspects. And also at Rolex, we work together on different types of, uh, of of need. So there's a bunch of different partners uh, locally that will help for, for any vision type requirements. This is this is a question for me. I mean, you guys talk so much about ease of, of programming. You, you gave a demo there in the video, which made it look very easy. And ease of programming is the overall theme in, in all different types of uh, robotics and robotics applications. When are we setting up palletizing applications with chat GPT? Is that being done yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's right now, I think it's, uh, 
very easy to do. So, you know, I don't think it's, it's necessary. Well, well, we'll see AI included is when we're talking about mixed palletizing. That's, that's where the AI will be uh, optimized. For the rest, it's yeah. just, you know, measuring uh, your box or having this, the box size that's something you know anyone with a ruler can do. So I can give it to my seven years old, seven year old, and he, he'll be able to do it. That's what we we, we test it on our, our children first. If they yeah, they my five year old it, daughter uh, can manage to uh, exactly. So ChatGPT can wait on, on that, but on the mixed palletizing, <laughs> that that's going to be something where it'll be very interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, uh, being facetious there, but thank you for for entertaining that question. There's a, a question that actually has come in, but it's a good transition by you that, that has come in about mixed palletizing solutions. Someone's just wondering where they can go to learn more. Do you guys have any uh, additional resources available on your websites? Uh, any other events like this that you've done that point and educate folks about mixed palletizing solutions? Yeah, well, we we don't do it right now. So so uh, so um, right now, uh, if you walk, uh, you know, the Automate Show or uh, uh, the Pack Expo Show or shows like that, the APX APM shows, uh, you're gonna find some companies. Uh, uh, I have two out of my head right now. There's a company called Smart Robotics that do it. Okay, that does it. Another one, it's called Dexterity. Uh, I don't know much about them, but that's two companies that I that we've seen that they 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 started working on that, you know. Uh, uh, but yeah. So great, awesome. Um, uh, let's see here. A bunch of questions have come in. We talked a little bit about this, but uh, could you please explain how your palletizing solution works without any vision sensors? Oh. Well, that's uh, pretty straightforward. So whatever we can do with vision, we're, we're trying to do it with mechanics. Every time you're trying to simplify, so the mechanics, uh, uh, David talked about, we had the skew conveyor. So it always positions the uh, the boxes in a set point. So as you know the dimension of the box, you'll always know where the center is. So there's no teaching, no vision. We're, the only time we're talking or investigating vision would be when we're talking about uh, depalletizing on a let's say crooked type pat, uh, palette pattern, but the rest is uh, is all due to the mechanics that has been done. So um, B Robox built a very sturdy, uh, you know, base uh, robot base, and so the pallets are always at the same place, and the box with the screw conveyor is always at the same place. So you don't need any vision unless you want to do a box quality inspection or uh, data, code, uh, whatever management that you might require. So we're showing the video again, just so you can see the, the skew can be. Yeah, so, so, so on the pallets unit, once you've entered the dimensions of a box, uh, it's it's a matter of calculations, right? Because the, the case uh, are brought, the cases are brought at a datum position uh, with, with the skewed conveyor, and the robot by, by calculation will know exactly where to pick it up uh, with, the, with, with its uh, end of arm tool. Um, so that's the way we manage to not use vision uh, to pick the cases. And same thing for the pallets. So here you see yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So that's the datum position. So the robot doesn't have to see the box because it's always brought at the right place. Maybe one quick note as well. So you, we've seen the, uh, the magic pattern, you know, build your pattern as well. But if someone has a custom pattern, there's always a way that you can drag and drop your palette, uh, your patent on a layer, and then just build it up however you might need. Yeah, thank you. And so that's same nine thing nine. if you want to play Jenga, you know, on yeah. Friday afternoons. <laughs> yeah. A uh, couple of questions related to availability of this system. Do you guys stock these systems, or what's the lead time on the palette system? Yeah, so right now, uh, the lead time is six to eight weeks for a standard uh, system. Um, we used to stock them, but right now, you know, the orders are, are, are coming at a fast pace. Uh, uh, so we don't stock anything right now. We just, uh, you know, build four units a week. We and we're robots. increasing, yeah. Yeah, we're increasing this capacity. We're moving in a brand new facility uh, in two months to increase this capacity to eight units a week. Well, post pandemic, you know, six to eight weeks is almost stock, you know, technically speaking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, another question here, is there a set number of box measurements in the PAL system, or can I program in my own box measurements? Oh, it's, uh, you, you put your own box measurements. 
So there's you just take a ruler, measure your boxes, uh, put it in the system, and it'll automatically, you save it as, let's say you're doing box type A. So every time you go to box type A, you'll see it's going to be the same system. And then you can add how many edit, you know, form factors you want. Another question here is about switching between production lines. How, how quickly can that be done with the pallets? Yeah, so uh, as, as we were discussing earlier, uh, it's just a matter of moving the unit. So you unlock the wheels, the, uh, you bring it in place, so, so ready. And, and we have a, a UPS option as well, because uh, if, you, if you want to uh, turn it off and turn it back on, uh, you have to wait for like uh, four to five minutes for uh, the servo motors you know, to, to start up. If you if you use a UPS uh, battery pack on it, uh, really it takes the, uh, as much time as taking you know a cart from a line and bring it to uh, the other line. Yeah. yeah, just depends on how fast you walk, I would say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a matter of minutes, it seems like, uh, which yeah, is yes. great to hear. What about um, I, I don't know if you guys can speak to overall palletizing or depalletizing, and, and uh, are there markets where you're seeing this? needed more so than others uh food and bev yeah. is the oh. is where you know there's well I, I, for for collaborative applications because there there's many you know small cases that are usually managed by human beings at the end of the lines mm -hmm. uh yeah so i would say that uh mostly food and bev yeah, yeah. that's but what we see. we see pharma we see all over it it all depends on the speed of production how many lines there are uh, again, it's if the application fits, it'll be. But again, you know, food and bed, food and probably one. Yeah. Another question here: Can I turn off the co collaborative uh, the collaborative setting to palletize faster? Yes, absolutely. So uh, right now uh, on the pallet unit, we manage it in in, in adding safety scanners. Uh, we use the vertical. Uh, we use them vertically to create kind of a virtual fence, uh, which is located, uh, I believe, uh, 13 inches uh, from uh, the pallet or, uh, you know, the, the palletizing zones yeah. um, to create a, a smaller footprint. Uh, some, some other solutions will use uh, uh, the same scanners, but uh, horizontally. Then you have to take in account uh, probably between three and three, three and four feet of distance in between the pallet and the secured zone. And what's very great, or uh, I was going to say, uh, what, what's very cool uh, when using a cobot is that when someone enters the scan zone, the robot doesn't turn off uh, like a, a robot with, you know, an industrial robot with, with wood. Uh, um, uh, so when you have a safety uh, fence uh, intrusion, the robot will simply slow down at a cobot space, at a cobot pace, yep. uh, and and it will continue palletizing. Uh, while we're on that topic, so that's one of the one of the benefits of using a cobot versus an industrial robot for palletizing or depalletizing. What are could just to recap some of the other reasons why uh, somebody would prefer to use a cobot rather than an industrial robot arm for these applications. Uh, it, it all depends on the application. So if you have uh, multiple lines coming in, you can use an industrial robot and have this, you know, the speed requirements to be done to, you know, do the application. But we're seeing more and more people looking at putting smaller collaborative robots on different lines. You, you got to think of the space you're saving. And as well, you know, if you're concentrating all into one uh, product that needs, you know, maintenance could be down for whatever reason, having multiple lines that can switch over could be optimized for certain uh, needs. So it all depends on uh, the, the, the need uh, of the application itself, mm -hmm. you know, and the customer's production line. Uh, another question has come in here. Uh, can you have a barcode reader on the robotic arm used to scan the box, which would indicate the type and the size of the box and have pouts use that new size for placement yeah i, I like the idea uh, yeah so so you could you scan you know uh, the barcode of a box uh, to uh to change from a pattern to uh to another one yeah uh, so totally feasible yeah um and, and very good idea uh some some other uh solutions uh, uh 
that could be used, you know, like scanners uh, to make sure. Laser, laser uh, distance meters to just make sure you have the, the proper box coming in. Yeah. But a barcode reader that where say the box comes in for a new pallet pattern would save it, make sure it's the proper one. It could be done, it's not done at the moment, but th those are the part of customizations yep. that the team at Rollbox can do. You know, if the barcode is always located at the same position, uh, uh, that's easier than if the barcode is not positioned at the same position when the box is, is moving along a conveyor, uh, in which case you, instead of, you know, having the, the, the user selecting uh, the, the pattern from the list, uh, they would just, you know, use this, uh, this scanner and scan the barcode act like uh, you would or do at, at Walmart, right? Yeah, or already on the conveyor when it comes in, so it could be also another idea. Yeah. 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 Good questions. Yeah. yeah, lots of great questions. Thank you, folks, for, for chiming in. We still have a few minutes here. So again, anything else that's come to mind, uh, please let us know in the, in the uh, Q&A box there. Another question that has come in is about training. What kind of training time does it take to impl implement the PALT system? Um, is it minutes or hours or? Well, I would say five minutes. Yeah, uh, it's very. Uh, uh, our software is re is very uh, user friendly and very intuitive. Um, uh, the, the 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 UPS uh, delivery guy helped the team a lot, and and you know, and I'm I'm not joking. Yeah. Every time the, the the delivery guy was uh, was uh, delivering some some. Uh, some something we were asking him. Hey, come! We we did a, a new upgrade on our on our software. Come trying out, uh, come come try it out. Um, it, it's really intuitive. Uh, so if you can, you know, manage uh, 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 your smartphone, it's, it's as easy as that. You can zoom in, zoom out. Um, so it, it's also basically kind of a wizard. You know, when you're operating yep. on uh, window whatever. Yeah. So it goes next. You know, operate this. We've had. We've done some trials where we bring someone, haven't told them anything about the robot, hasn't programmed a robot in, in, in their life, and we're, you know, go ahead, let's see how much time, you know, it, yeah. it'll work around. So you just, you know, put boxes size, oh, there's a flashing button here, I'll press it, boop, start spalletizing. Yeah. It, it is very uh, intuitive, so it, not not that much. And, and that's the training to create a padded pattern. Uh, but but the, the operator oh, yeah. training is literally push on the flashing buttons. Yeah. So when the green light is flashing, you push on it, the robot will start. If there's a collision in cobot mode, uh, the robot will stop. Uh, you, you have a prompt on the screen uh, telling you what to do. And then you have to uh, push on the blue button, which is the rearm button. And then uh, the green button will flash and you hit, you, you push on it. And so, so the operator training is push on the flashing buttons. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, another question here that has come in about when the cobot slows down. Are there any visual cues or ways to visually tell folks who might be working nearby that the cobot has slowed down when someone's approaching it? Um, there are indicator light already on the on the system, on, and on the, the robot, robot yeah. itself flashes when it's in uh, yeah. collision or yeah. uh, slow down mode. So, you, so yeah. you have to, yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. Uh, I don't see any more questions. Again, uh, we still have a couple of minutes, so if, if one or two come in in the in the next few minutes, we can certainly throw those out to the to the panel here. But in the meantime, you know, maybe we can just start to wrap things up. I don't know if each of you want to go through and just sort of give a closing thought uh, about cobots and palletizing and depalletizing. Um, you know, David, maybe we can start with you. Well, you know. What we learned uh, so far, we've been working uh, uh, for in, in palletizing for several years, um, and, and really, the ease of use is is, is key. It's really key. Yeah. I would also maybe uh, modularity. You know, because production lines in North America, instead of what we're seeing in Asia, is is we're seeing people producing all sorts of different uh, products, but in, in in not a repetitive. You know. Uh, thousands and thousands of, of ways. So it's you're doing production of, let's say, one type of product for one week, then you're switching over. You're switching over regularly on uh, on the system. So that's basically what we're we're seeing in the market. Oh, nice! Look at that. Yeah, we got, we got movement there. Uh, Matt, just wanted yeah. to give you a chance yeah. here to chime in. Any any sort of closing thoughts from you, sir? Sure. So <clears throat> what's really unique about the PALT solution is they've taken um, kind of a subset 
a function that our robot arm can do, um, which is just a pick in place. And they've kind of removed the complexity of the pick with their skewed conveyor. So, you know, that was one issue I've always found when creating pick in places, um, your pick points can change and vary. And so that's when you, you know, you can implement vision or um, an AI to basically define that position um, real time. And what's great about the SKU conveyor is just, you're always gonna have the exact same position. And I think that's just a brilliant um, application that they've come up with. And, awesome. Well, yeah. again, it doesn't look like we have uh oops, sorry, go ahead. Did I cut you off there? Nope. Um, I was just going to say, you know, we also have, you know, there were some questions about the safety indicator. You know, there is LED lights built into the robot arm that will flash. Um, and how Robox is Im implemented is, you know, when someone is in the collaborative space, the robot will flash, uh, I believe it's a yellow LED instead of uh, a green or blue, so, um, just to indicate its position. And it's in a different sit uh, zone. On behalf of everyone behind the scenes, my name is Steve Crow. Thank you, everybody for tuning in to this uh, talk and all the talks as part of our collaborative robotics training days. Really appreciate it. And uh, hope to talk to you guys again soon. Take care. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Merci beaucoup. Merci.